we're going to take a brief look at this CED player made by Hitachi. It is the VIP1000 Capacitance Electronic Disc Playing System. This particular unit has been reviewed on my channel before and I just happened to run into another one today and wanted to share it with you. The main thing I wanted to share with you is how easy it is to get one of these back running again. The components that are on the inside of it are very very well made and it's l very unlikely that you're going to have to replace any of the electronics in the system. Now that's pretty amazing for a piece of equipment that was made in 1981 and a lot of vintage electronics unfortunately have to have capacitors replaced in them before they even function but these video disc players are just made amazingly well and I don't know of any model CED player that uh, isn't in that category where it's really just a matter of simple things to get them running I'm going to show you three things that you'll need to get one of these running if you happen to run across one second hand. So to do that, we're going to need to open up the unit. So first, I've already re removed all of the screws on it, so literally all I have to do is lift straight up on the case and it comes off. Now there's a couple of uh, screws that need to be removed from this uh, chassis here, and once you remove those, this part just lifts up. Now there is a little remote control plug in here that needs to come out before you can lift it. So I just kind of push this up, pull the little plug out like that, and then lift this up like that to reveal a gigantic circuit board inside. So let's go on into it for a moment here and let me show you the three things you'll need to get this unit back running again if you happen to have found one. After you've lifted up the main circuit board, revealing the inside of the unit, you'll see this. You'll see a very clean inside, hopefully, just as you see here. Now this particular unit is pretty dirty on the outside, and what I did is I, I'm selling, actually I've sold the, uh, the stylus separately from the unit. But uh, the stylus is actually one of the three things you're going to need to get one of these working again. It's the part that fails the most. The first part that fails the most is this belt. So there's a belt here. This belt lifts up the carriage that lowers the, the, uh, the record onto the turntable. This is your turntable here, your turntable spindle. So this is going to be the first belt that has probably turned into goo. And maybe not goo, but maybe just turned into just a really slimy, gooey belt that has no, uh, you know, I don't know, pull to it anymore. Okay, so this one's pretty much useless. I found this one actually laying inside the unit. So get you a better belt. Now, funny thing is, somebody had tried to use these kind of belts in this unit. There was a yellow one inside, and there was a pink one inside. But uh, don't use, like, belts that you would use to, I don't know, put your hair back with, okay? You probably wouldn't put your hair back with it, but somebody would. So a belt goes here. So between these two pulleys, and then there's another belt on the back side. The other belt is the belt for the carriage, for the, uh, the, the, you know, the arm, the stylus uh, carriage arm here. And that belt is back in the back back there. So moving around the side of the unit here, we'll zoom in and show you that belt. So there is the belt right there running between that left pulley that you see on the left and the one on the right. So I've replaced that belt as well. Now one of the things you can do to get to that belt is to use a pair of tweezers. So you can use tweezers and get in there and grab a hold of it and plop it onto the, uh, the two pulleys that are in there. The other thing you can do is manually move one of the carriage, well you can manually move the carriage itself and move it out of the way so that you can get in there. And the way you move the, the carriage manually is by turning one of the pulleys. Now in order to turn that pulley, you're going to have to manually turn this pulley over here and lower the carriage on the inside. So again, that's something you can kind of experiment. But it takes lots of turning to get that to happen. So uh, I guess I could demonstrate it for you here. So what I'm doing over here is I'm turning this pulley counterclockwise and you'll hear a big thump as, uh, as you're going through it. And so essentially you'll just turn this manually until this platform that you see right here lays flat up against the main board here at the bottom or the, 
the main metal bracket and you'll start to feel some resistance in it. Okay, so now I can't really turn it anymore. So now I'm going to go back to the one in the back and um, I am going to turn the other pulley and again it's going to take a lot of turns to do it. Now the nice thing about it is uh, well first of all make sure this thing is unplugged before you do any of that. Uh, of course most of, most of you uh, that kind of comes naturally for you. You you know this. So I'm going to just continue to pull, turn this pulley back here. Now some of you guys probably don't have the dexterity to to get inside of here and um, turn this pulley. So I mean to, to get to it with the pair of tweezers. So that's why I'm showing you this manual process. So you'll see the carriage arm moving out of the way very slowly here. And if I do it enough times, it will move far enough out of the way that um, I can get in there to that belt. Okay, so again, to review, we've lowered the front one counterclockwise, and now we're turning this one counterclockwise. And now you can kind of see it being revealed here. So if you move this out of the way far enough, you, can, you won't even need tweezers. You can just reach in there and do it yourself with your fingers. Okay, so I've gotten that out of the way. Now, see, I can literally grab the belt and remove it if it's an ugly, old, gooey one. And then I can put the new one on there really easily. And I think this particular belt came out of a VCR repair kit, if I remember correctly. There we go. All right, so now my now my belt is replaced. Now the cool thing about it is once you get the new belt on there, the machine will actually do the return to normal for you. But uh, what I'm going to suggest before we do that is that you remove the stylus. Now the stylus is the third piece of this puzzle that you're going to need to make sure you have a working player. So to remove the stylus, you pull up on this white knob. And you'll see there's a little indentation right here for your thumb. And you reach in and pull the stylus out. So this is the stylus. So if your stylus is uh, doesn't look like this one, then you are going to have some issues playing your discs. Okay. So for this return to normal issue, I'm just going to go ahead and remove the stylus. Take it out. Don't touch anything in here. Close the little lid. Push the little button down. The other thing I'd recommend you do is put a little bit of light machine oil on this bar back here in the back. Move the camera up a little bit. So there's this bar back here. So just take a little bit of light machine oil. I use, um, I use this 3-in-1 oil. Put a little on your finger and rub it across that bar. And then there's another bar here in the front. You can put a little bit of oil on that and rub it onto this bar as well. You can see it underneath that uh, plastic piece right there. Okay, So rub a little onto that one as well. Then once you get those back into place, go ahead and plug the unit in. I know, this is the scary part. And then I'm just going to push in on this little piece right here. And once I do, it should realize that the carriage arm is in the wrong spot and return it back to normal. There it goes. And looky there, even the carriage comes up like it's supposed to. Okay. So my belts have been replaced, it's ready to go, and of course it powers off just like it's supposed to. Okay, So the next part would be to go ahead and put that stylus back in like this. Just drop it in there. Don't force it. And push this back. Now interestingly enough, there is a light sensor on the front of this machine that um, will keep the unit from operating with a lot of light around. So I believe it's this one right here. And if this sees light, then it doesn't think that there's a disc inside or something. It may I don't know if it's this one or another one. But all I know is I found out that uh, I was trying this earlier to play it with the, with the top off because I kind of wanted to rehearse it before the video started. And the thing just would not play with, uh, with the curtains open and the light coming in. Well, then we can go ahead and test it. I've got my 12 o'clock high disc here. And you'll see that it, it needs to fit under this flap here and under that flap there. And then I'm going to push in my disc until it clicks. 
and pull it back out. And off the unit goes to do its thing. And then down here uh, below I have a little TV hooked up where I can monitor what it's doing. So apparently it's low enough light in here that uh, the unit is going to play. Oop, sorry, I bumped the camera there. So you can see I've got the, the TV playing down here at the bottom. So it's kind of cool. You can have it open and uh, kind of watch it play, do its thing. So there again is the disc playing all on its own. So then if I hit stop on this up here, one of these is stop. There it goes. Rise, my child, rise. And it rose. So the, the stop button was actually this button right here. So I pressed it right on the front, right there, that little plastic piece. That was my stop button. So there you go. There is just a quick tutorial on getting your VIP 1000 working. And I think this same principle will, will also apply to the realistic Radio Shack brand CED player, as well as the Sears CED player, and I think those all three models are almost identical to this one, if not really close. Now this is the mono version, does not play stereo, but there is a stereo version out there, I believe, of this Hitachi. So again, I hope you uh, learned a little bit of something today, and thank you for watching. You can uh, look down in the description of this video. I have a link in here to my original VIP 1000 video that I made way back in the day. Check that one out. It's a little bit more about the functionality and the, uh, the background on this particular model. Again, thank you for watching. Please subscribe, share with a friend, and thank you for watching.